if you want to get a tray that looks kind of like this, wherever you keep them in your pantry. And then you rip some paper towel off of the roll. I have three sheets here. I'm just going to lay it flat on the tray so it can collect moisture. Yeah, I forget the name of this tool, but I'll put it in text on the screen, so don't worry. You want to grab your tool that looks like this and place it in the middle of the paper towels horizontally. Shove your tray a little to the back so you have room to put down a cutting board. And on this cutting board, you're going to horizontally place your zucchini. Then you're going to grab a knife. This is going to be a right-handed tutorial. Take this black part, the handle, in your hand and use the blade, this part here I'm showing is the blade, to cut the two ends off the zucchini. One, two. And you'll just be throwing those away on the side. Bring this tray back in focus and again sticking to a right hand tutorial, you want to put the zucchini horizontally onto your cutting tool and just go back and forth making strips. The zucchini will look like this. half when it's being cut, and that's how you want it to look. Am I getting a good angle? Oh yes, here we go. Anyway, you're just going to continue going back and forth, cutting the zucchini until you've done the whole thing. Back and forth, left, right, cut the zucchini. Every so often you don't want to pick it up and move the bottom zucchinis to the side so that you have room to make more. Also help if you want to put your main piece of zucchini off the side and clean off the top as well. It's easier to cut if we scrape all of this off. So hold it in your left hand, this time vertically, and just scrape downward with your right hand and get everything off. Be careful so you don't cut yourself because this is a blade in the middle. Then you can put it back down horizontally and keep making those zucchini slices. And if your zucchini breaks, you have three pieces, that's fine. It's just work with the smaller ones. And you do all three of them. You have zoodled the entire zucchini. You want to again pick the tool up in your left hand, hold it vertically and right hand scrape so that you've got everything off of it. You also want to turn it around like this, you're scraping the inside as well. Tap everything out, put it off to the side, and now spread out your zucchini so that it's more even on the paper towel. Just take one of your hands and rub it like this. No particular method, just get it semi-flat. Now you want to grab your salt. In my case, you got this giant bottle of ground pink sea salt. And you want to place it down on the counter. Hold it firmly in your left hand. Like I said, this is all a right, right hand tutorial. Put your right hand on the, on the lid and twist until it comes off. Then put it down. Use your right hand to pick up your quarter teaspoon, which is the one with the one slash four on it. Put the rounded end into the salt like so, it will get full, and then sprinkle it all over the zucchini like so. If it's not perfectly even, that's fine, you'll mix it around with your hand anyway. I'm going to re-pick up the salt lid with your right hand and put it back on top of the container before you put it away. You don't want it spilling in your cabinet. So again, this is the closed how it looked when you started. And salted your zucchini will look like this, spread out on the paper towel. Now it has to sit for 30 minutes and drain all excess liquid. So we're going to do a set a timer. I'll be using my oven. So the way mine works is you just click timer, click plus to have the right amount of minutes. 30 is what we want. Click start, and then wait for it to go off. The zucchini resting, you can grab a large bowl of your choice. I have this red one here, and just place it in your sink. Use your right hand to grab the faucet and twist it upwards towards the bedside because you want hot water filling in the bowl. 
So up, and then you want over it so it goes on. Fill the bowl about three quarters full. To make sure the water is warm by just sticking a finger in it and seeing how it feels to you. Doesn't have to be scalding hot, just a little above lukewarm. What you're going to do with this water is you're going to take your bag of shrimp, which should have been defrosting in your fridge, and you're going to place it in the water to help speed up the defrosting process. Just submerge it under there in the water, and that'll help get all the ice off. If it doesn't stay completely underneath, that's fine. Just being in the water will help. What to do while waiting 30 minutes for the zucchini is to get out your pot and steamer. Mine looks like this. I'm going to use my left hand and I'm going to take the steamer pot off and just set it on the side. Pot over to the sink. Take the shrimp out of the sink because it's in the way and put my pot in the sink. Then I will use my right hand to turn to turn the faucet and the water will go on into my pot, filling it up maybe a quarter to halfway. For the stove. Put your steamer back on top as so. This time I used my right hand to just slide it in. And also my right hand grab right here on the handle and take the lid off to the side. Set up with the same cutting board and knife that I showed you earlier. And this time we have a bag of cauliflower. So first things first is you use your hands to open up the bag from the top. And then I'm using my right hand, just grab each piece of cauliflower and take it out of the bag onto some placement of the cutting board. Then take this bag and just throw it to the side. So I'm going to move three of these floors out of the way. Just take your right hand and shove them. Now what I want you to do with the one floor that you have left is pick up the knife. Again, these are hand tutorials. Put the black part in your right hand and pick it up like this. Use your left hand to hold on to the cauliflower. And then with your right hand, you're just gonna put the blade onto the cauliflower and make downward chopping motions. See like this? So that you will cut the cauliflower and remember to keep spinning it with your left hand, turn it around so you get everywhere evenly cut. Then take the knife on the cutting board, put it down blade side and shove to the right you can make room for the next slot where you repeat the same process. Hold in your left hand, blade side down, chop, and keep chopping slash rotating until you have cut the entire little head into slots. Again, blade down, side right, and you can do the third one. Repeat for as many little heads as you have. All your cauliflower has been chopped. You can turn on your burner. In my case, it's this one. And we're gonna put it on to max, the highest level, so that the water will boil. What we're trying to do is steam the cauliflower. We take the cauliflower and want to dump it into the pot. So I'm gonna use my right hand to pick up the cutting board and lift it so that we have it on top of the steamer like this. And then I would take my left hand to scrape it all into the steamer. Once you've slid all the cauliflower in, it should look like this. When the burner's on, it will look like this, at least on my stove anyway. And now you want to do, with your left hand, pick up the lid by the handle, like so it should be. And put it on top so the steam stays in when you're cooking. Update, we have 15 minutes left, so we're half done on our whites for the zucchini. You can see that your pot is really steaming, so now we're going to test and see if the cauliflower is done. First, use your left hand, grab onto the handle, and put your lid off to the side. Then, you, still using your left hand, we're going to take a fork, hold on to the handle, and leave the stabby parts exposed, as you see here in my, in my hand, and jab a piece of cauliflower. 
if it punctures easily, pick up some steam, it's really hot. Don't burn yourself. Stab the cauliflower and if it goes through really easily, which mine is, you want to take it off the heat. So once you've turned the burner off, you're going to grip the steamer. I'm using my right hand and take it off the main pot. Then your boiling water here, just take it to your sink, dump it out. Leave the pot right here sitting in the sink, you'll wash it later. The is now done for 30 minutes of zucchini, so you want to turn it off, just click timer button. That way you don't get the annoying beeping sound. And for now, just leave it, don't touch it. We have something to do with the shrimp. Going back to that red bowl I had with the shrimp, and we're just going to dump out all the water. So now we're going to grab a pair of scissors and stick our hands through these little holes here. So we're holding them like so. And we're going to use the blade to cut off the top of the shrimp bag. Can you see this angle? Yes, you can. Okay. Just take the scissors to the top of the bag and make snipping motions until the piece just falls off because we have it all entirely cut. Then put the scissors down, hold the bag in your right hand, and turn it upside down so all the shrimp falls into your bowl. Discard the bag on the side, you'll throw it away after this next step. What you do is you're going to reach in, I'm using my right hand, and pick up a shrimp. Then you're going to come in with your left hand and squeeze the tail of the shrimp. Are we getting this on focus? Come on, camera. Butter dish, which in my case needs to be opened, so left hand right on top, just pick it up, and it comes off easily. Then, also with your left hand, you're going to pick hold of the butter knife by the handle, see exactly as I'm doing, and stick the blade, like so, into the butter. Doesn't matter how much you get. No exact measurement here. And just scrape, using your left hand, butter side down, across the edge of the pan, and drop it in. The burner, it's actually the same one I used before for the cauliflower, but this time we only want it at about medium. So I'm going to go like this and stop when I hit five. I'm going to take our left hand and reclose the butter dish as so, lid on, and press down before I put it away. So we'll hold the spoon by the handle so the flat part should be available and the long skinny part should be in your hand. I'm just going to shove the butter around the pot, try to help speed up the melting by agitation. Make sure so you cover every inch of the bottom of your pan. When it's covered in melted butter, you're ready to add the shrimp. And don't just dump the bowl, because there's water in the bottom that you don't want. You're going to grab your shrimp in handfuls, like this, and shake out the water. Make sure that if you miss any tails, you get those off now. Well, I've started out fully gray, but as you can see, they're already starting to turn pink. And so you want to leave them on the burner until they are fully pink all over on all of them. Put the flat spot, put the long skinny part of the spoon in your hand, the flat part available, and just shove them around here and there occasionally so that all sides get covered. Okay, now that your shrimp are fully cooked, you want to take the pan, I'm holding the handle here in my right hand, and we're going to dump them back into the same bowl they're in before. I've poured out all the water and shells so that we're only going to have cooked shrimp, nothing else. Like so, you have shrimp in a bowl. We're going to take our kitchen scale and grab a small bowl to put on top of it, like so. Then we're going to move with our right hand, twist the number section right because we want this little red line to be on top of the zero. Like so. Now we are at zero. Okay, so now we're going to grab our block of cream cheese and open it. I'm using my right hand to carefully rip the cardboard. 
like that. Dig your fingers in. Why is this so difficult? For some reason I struggled a bit, but once you have the box open, it will look like this. And you just want to tip it upside down so your cream cheese will slide out. Ta-da! I have the same scissors that I showed you earlier. And hold them in the same way. Fingers through these little holes. Like this. And use the blade to cut open the bag of cream cheese. Just make cutting motions until your blade has made a hole. And the cream cheese can be squeezed out. Right, now that we have a hole in our cream cheese bag, we are going to be measuring out 4 ounces. Which means we want to move our little red dot from the zero where it's at to the 4 right there. Can you see where I'm pointing? Move from the zero to the 4. And so what we're going to do is pick up the bag of cream cheese in our hand and just squeeze with all our might so that it gets out of the hole and into the bowl. Squeezing out the bag, having enough cream cheese should look like this. And you'll notice we've moved from the zero to the four. I'm back over to the pan where we cook the shrimp. It's still on medium heat. And dump in this cream cheese. Cream cheese takes a while to melt, so it's fine that it's going in by itself before you have the ingredients. That I'll be adding right after. Take that same spoon, hold it by the long skinny part and the flat part open, just move the cream cheese around and stir it out. Our cream. I have here a half cup and I'm going to grab the bottle of cream in my right hand and see this open spout. I'm going to pour out from that spout until I fill my cup. When your cup is full, grab the handle here in your right hand and we're going to dump the contents into the pan with our cream cheese. And actually I'm thinking five is a little hot because our cream cheese so our cream is boiling, so let's turn it down to about three. Take the same half cup that had our cream and use it to measure out our parmesan. I have a canister over here that I'm going to grab in my right hand and then dump into the can. If yours is not open, sorry I missed a step, if yours is not open just spin the red thing until it is open. Okay, now we're dumping the cream cheese, not cream cheese, sorry, parmesan. Dump the parmesan into our half cup until it's full. Don't worry if it makes a mess, we'll clean that up after. Get some bonus cheese in our dish by scooping it all in. Okay, I think that's close enough for that I might even it out and clean up. Yes, perfect. So pick it up in your right hand by the handle as so. Bring it over here and dump it into your cream cheese cream mixture. You put it in hand, flat part out to mix it in. If you want to grip onto the pan handle with the other hand for support, then go ahead and do that. The cheese is still melting, but I'm going to go ahead and add some seasoning. I've chosen here to go with garlic plus. Sorry, my thumbs on the label. Garlic plus. So what you want to do is you want to take the spoon side and just flick it open like this. Put your thumb finger under and pop it. Like that. And then holding the bottle in your hand. You just want to sprinkle it in until you have as much as suits your taste. Remember to stir it in. I just did that last cup vertically, but anyway, you now have your garlic plus in and you want to stir it around. Use the spoon the same way I've been telling you until all of your seasoning is incorporated into the mixture. Taste it if you'd like and then you know whether or not you want to add more. Now we're going back to that zucchini that we've been leaving sit and we're just going to grab the, in our hand the paper towel and scoop it to the, call the zucchini more goes into one giant pile. On both sides we're going to do that so it's in the middle. Then we want to take this zucchini pile and 
make sure that it gets into our sauce, like so. Just grab the handfuls and put the zucchini into your sauce. No zucchini noodles. Be careful. If you, if you have paper towel ripped like mine did, you don't want to have paper in your final dish. And just keep doing that until you have all your zucchini. All your zucchini is in the pan. You're also going to dump in the bowl of shrimp and the steamed cauliflower. It should now look like this. And I'm going to grab the spoon, same way I've been telling you, and just stir it in until everything's nice and mixed. Like there's not enough sauce for a vegetable ratio the way mine does, you can just grab your bottle of cream, pop open the spout like this, and then dump some more in, as much as you think is enough. I'm going to start with that. Once everything is stirred together, it should look like this. And you, all you want to do is leave it on the burner until it's as hot as you want it to be. If your dish is hot enough, all you have to do is spoon it up into a bowl or a plate of your choice. And then you can add a little extra parmesan on top if you'd like and eat. You have now successfully made shrimp and cauliflower alfredo zoodles.